So I will be uh, talking about uh, push notification on mobile with, uh, with a focus on, on iOS because I know uh, iOS uh, better than Android, but I can answer your question on Android as well if they are not too uh, deep and too uh, down into the, the details. So I guess you all know what is, uh, what is push notification. This is a small uh, three ton alert you get on your iPhone or the, or the, or the, the thing you have on your, on your notification center on Android that made, make you a late phone lane blink. Uh, I will be explaining how you can implement push notification on top of uh, the boxcar platform and hopefully we can uh, probably implement that in your code in uh, less than one hour if you, if you want to, 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 to have that uh, up and running. So no, no problem about that. So basically what the platform does is, is that it allows you to register all your device on our platform so that you can have their identifier to send them push notification. So this is uh, something that Apple does not do that you, you would have to do yourself or rely on, on a third party platform to do as well. Uh, we provide a flexible uh, publisher API to, to be able to send notification. So you can not only target one device, you can target uh, a lot of device uh, by uh, tag. So tag is kind of channel you are subscribing to. Uh, you can uh, target a device by uh, alias. So you can target with an alias. If you register a device with an alias, you can target several devices for the same user. Uh, and you can broadcast to, uh, to various uh, segments of your, of your user base. We provide real-time analytics, so when you're pushing, when, when you're sending a push, you will see the graph moving in real-time with all the open and, and so on, so kind of uh, fancy, uh, fancy stuff. And uh, uh, you can uh, get the push right. We, we have a SDK that is doing all the painful stuff for you and make sure that you don't make any rookie mistake when you implement push notification. It's the all uh, done right in that, uh, in that SDK. So we, we, we have that SDK for iOS. For Android, we, we support several flavors of Android, like uh, Google One, uh, Amazon One, the Kindle, uh, and uh, the Nokia phone. We used to, suppo to support the Nokia phone, the Android one, the one that uh, lived only for, uh, uh, for a few months. <laughs> Uh, and we support Cordova PhoneGap. If you develop uh, mobile applications that are actually web apps, we, we, we support that as well. So uh, basically, uh, when you start a project, you, you register an account on the push uh, console uh, system, and uh, basically when you register a user, you are put into an organization. Uh, an organization can have several users. That organization, uh, must have at least a project. A project in our uh, terminology is basically what you would call probably an application. You can have several projects. So, so for example, for BBC, they have two projects. One is BBC News, one is BBC Sport. And for BBC News, they have a, uh, the UK version of BBC News, which is an iOS version, the Android version of uh, BBC News, the international version of BBC News on iOS. So basically, this, that's the way to group uh, a consistent uh, set of uh, application together. And a project can have publishers. So publishers uh, give you credentials uh, that you can distribute uh, among your backend developers to allow them to send notification to your user base. So we, you can have several publishers so that you can split uh, uh, the risk and di distribute different tokens to different uh, backends. And if you want to rev revoke one, this is very easy to do so. And you have client application, so uh, with various flavor. You can have uh, many versions of them. You can have, for iOS, for example, you can have a cl uh, an iPad version and an and a iPhone version if you don't have a universal application. Uh, once you have set up that in the push console, uh, you can put the SDK into your mobile application and the SDK allow you, allows the device to register on the platform. So basically, it's not you that are adding yourself uh, the device on the, on, the, on the service. It's the device that registers themselves. And that way, they pass the right things 
uh, uh, to, to the server. So we, we know that the, the registration is right and we, we rarely have a device that can be contacted on the back end. So here is, a, here is a model of the application, basically. So that's, uh, that should get you started. Uh, one of the things we wanted to do is to try, I don't know how many of you have implemented push notification in an iOS application already. Uh, for those who get through that pen, uh, who have been through that pen, this is really a nightmare. And even if certificate last a year, every time they expire, you say, oh no, I have to, re uh, to rebuild everything again to make sure it works. So uh, what we did is uh, that we made a kind of wizard on top of Apple uh, certificate system that make it easy, you can build a, certific a certificate in two, uh, in two minutes. So I won't get through, uh, oops, no, I won't get through that. I, 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 would just, I just want to uh, <coughs> demo you how you will uh, uh, set up uh, your certificate uh, for iOS in two minutes. So. Basically, that's how you do it. You, you, once you have your client page, you, you click on the wizard, create your SSL certificate. Once you do that, you don't have to get through the Apple keychain. You download your CSR that is normally provided by, uh, by the boxcar, uh, the Apple keychain. So you download a CSR file. You go to Apple Developer Portal. Uh, you just log into that portal, uh, you go to your application, you upload, you will upload that CSR on the, on the, right, uh, the right application. And here is it, so push. So you get to your, to your push notification, you enable that, you create the certificate, you upload your file, coming from the boxcar console, you upload it, and, and you're done. You generate the certificate. It will give you a certificate which is not in the right format, but we will convert it for you uh, on the platform. And, uh, and basically, uh, that's it. The, once, once you have done that, our backend server is already connected to Apple push notification system, is pulling for the feedback system and so on, and, uh, and you're, you're, you're set, you, have a, you don't have anything, uh, anything else special to do. So basically, what uh, usually takes uh, probably one hour of pain finding back the command, command, command line uh, to type, to, to convert uh, in, in various format, now it takes uh, takes two minutes, so that's, uh, that's very, very, very fast and convenient. So once you have done that, you have set up everything, don't forget to download your provisional profile after having setting the push, because otherwise the push won't work. It will tell you, the SDK will tell you that you need to, to have a valid provisioning profile. So once you have done that, you can just uh, integrate uh, the SDK into your, your mobile application. And basically, we, we went, in the, in, in the new version we're building, we, we are going to an automatic mode. Basically, you just take a framework, you drag and drop that into your project, you, uh, you enable uh, the push capability into your project, you drag and drop a uh, boxcar config coming from our uh, platform, which where everything, all the parameters that are given for you. You drag and drop that, you build, you have, one or two call to integrate to, to be uh, to be uh, to, to register and, and, and you're done. So probably we can no 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 kidding we, we can integrate for it for you in your app uh, today if you want to. So basically what you what you need to implement is basically just uh, just that two call in did finishing uh, did finish launching with uh, option you set up boxcar it will read the config file. Uh, you have dropped into your project when you run it. And you just, if you know push notification on iOS, you know that there is many entry points for when you receive a notification. So we abstracted that for you, and uh, we offer you a single entry point. So you, you just have to implement that one. 
and you get all the parameters, what was the mode of the, uh, in which mode the application were running when the push notification is received and so on. You get everything as parameters, you implement that and, and you're done. So that's very, very easy. We, we have a few, uh, a few more options. Uh, I, I won't get uh, through all of them, but basically you get the uh, client notification mode. You know if that was in foreground, in background, of, or if uh, the um, notification was triggered by the app interacting, by the user interacting with it, like open, opening, tapping on the notification itself. Uh, what the SDK does for you automatically is a lot. You, it will register on, your on the Boxcast server, it will update the token where, when needed because Apple can change the no token at any time. So this is the identifier of your device uh, so for push notification. So if you want to be contacted, you have to pass the new one uh, to the server uh, so that your record is up to date on the server. Uh, we will be tracking notification and uh, opens in real time, so that's done automatically. Uh, we will cache everything that is relevant, uh, uh, and uh, we will provide also many reports. Normally you have a few lines of code, if you want to clean the badge, uh, clean the notification center, so we, we provide all the wrapper uh, that you need for that. Uh, when you modify the parameters, so uh, the the tag subscription and or or anything the you you have to say the, uh, to tell the SDK that you are finished so that we publish uh, the update on the server so that same device parameter. Uh, one thing uh, we we do a lot of other things like uh, allow you to to track the the um, the device by the vendor ID which is a unique identifier of the device in your own uh, application provider namespace. So basically, the vendor ID, if you have several apps like BBC, uh, BBC News and BBC Sport, uh, will have the same vendor ID because they are, they are from the same provider. And you have the ad advertising identifier that you may already use, so you might want to pass that to the server to, to be able to send a notification by that ID, specifically. You can set an alias, so for example, it may be the email, you can uh, target a user by the, by the email address using a set alias. You send a push to an email and it gets the notification thanks to that. Uh, we have several broadcasting modes, so I already mentioned a few of them, but uh, you can bro broadcast to all, all users of your uh, application, to specific client, iOS or Android, uh, to users anonymous or the, uh, to tell them to register if they get benefit from that. So that's, uh, that's the idea. And the most important thing, mo most of the companies that deploy push notification are basically using tags, which are channels, meaning that uh, it allows uh, the application to tell the server that this user is interested in breaking news, for example. And when you send a notification to breaking news, all the users that are interested in breaking news will get, will get it. So this is the most used feature, uh, broadcasting by channel. So this is the code, very easy. You can retrieve the tag from the server and you can set the list of tags you want that device to be subscribed to. And basically that's it. So this is a few of the helper methods we provide for cleaning badge and, uh, and notification center, but also to know if the push is actually enabled. So th there, there has been uh, a lot of change in, in the life of the push project by Apple. In the past, uh, you, you, you would only be registered on the push uh, notification uh, if the user had accepted to uh, receive push notification. Now it has changed and uh, a user can receive silent push notification even uh, if the user refuse, uh, refuses to, uh, to uh, receive a, a remote push notification. So they won't be displayed, but they can be processed by the app. So this is why now you, need to, you, you, you may need to know uh, if the push is really enabled and if, or if user are completely disabled uh, remote uh, notification. 
So basically, when you receive a push notification, you receive a data structure like this one, which is basically uh, the content of the alert, uh, the sound to play. Uh, you can put any custom information you want in it. So in the past, again, it has changed in, sep in last September, but in the past, you had only uh, 256 bytes available for uh, sending a push notification. Now you can send two kilobytes in each notification. So be careful because it can cost you a lot of bandwidth for, for uh, and, and, and a large part of the data plane of your user. So be very careful about that. But uh, this makes your app much more powerful. You can put, pass real data and process them. So this is really, really, uh, I think, a game changer for push notification. And basically, you have an API for pushing, but there, there are many cases where you want to push manually to your users. So uh, we have a push form. So basically, you can set a content, which is a te text of the alert. Uh, you can put a sound. You can put categories. Categories are what allows, what enables your app to have buttons on the notification itself, to perform action right from the notification center. You can have targets, like the tags, uh, the OS type, and so on. And you can define an uh, option for delivery. You can schedule push for, for later delivery. And you can have an extra variable, which is basically anything you want to pass to your application to, for example, open, it could be the article ID to open when the, so that when the user opens the push notification, uh, they will be, uh, teleport it to the right place into your, uh, your application. And uh, I, can, I could talk to you about many other uh, features of the, of the SDK. I won't right now. This, I just wanted to, to uh, give you a very brief overview, but, uh, but we can talk later on about that if you, uh, if you, if you want to, with a great pleasure. So this is all I have for uh, for push notification for the moment. Uh, I have other talk uh, later uh, when we, uh, for which we will uh, dig into uh, other, other topics that are not on push notification but rela that relate to push notification. So thank you.